Carter, what is it? Another case for Nick Carter, master detective. <laughs> Yes, it's another case for that most famous of all manhunters. The detective whose ability at solving crime is unequaled in the history of detective fiction. Nick Carter, Master Detective. Presented by the three great Linux home brighteners. Linux clear gloss varnish, Linux cream polish, and Linux self-polishing wax. Created by Acme, America's great producer of fine Acme quality paint. <laughs> Today's curious adventure, Four Rings of Death, or Nick Carter and the Mystery of the Tory Island. In just a moment, we'll hear how Nick Carter solved the mystery of the Four Rings. But first, do you realize that millions of homes are now brighter, more beautiful than ever, because so many American homemakers have come to depend on Chemtone, the miracle wall finish? Now they're discovering the way to new beauty for woodwork, furniture, and floors with the three great Linux home brighteners. Linux self-polishing wax, which beautifies your floors with a satiny yet tough anti-skid finish that resists wear, water, and dirt. Linux cream polish, which cleans as it polishes, leaving no oily film on your furniture. And Linux clear gloss varnish, the durable super varnish that dries to an elastic, transparent surface which protects all wood and linoleum in your home. You'll find the three great Linux home brighteners at your hardware, paint, or department store. Your headquarters also for Chemtone, the miracle wall finish. And now for today's mysterious adventure with Nick Carter. As our story opens, we find Nick and Patsy on board a small motorboat headed for Torrey Island, a small island just off the Long Island shore. If I'd known the weather was going to be like this, I never would have accepted this job. Why are you doing it, Nick? Oh, special favor to Colonel Howard. A friend of his, Andrew Jessup, asked him to find the best code expert he knew. And he said I was the man for the job. So when the colonel called me, I agreed to do it. Just what is it you're going to do? Well, it seems that back in 1776, four wealthy Tories who were afraid that Washington was going to capture Manhattan Island, got all their valuables together, and went to this little island where we're going now. Uh-huh. They buried everything somewhere on the island and recorded the burial place in a secret code, a cipher. They lived there for a while, and later were all lost in a storm while trying to get back to the mainland. That sounds pretty fantastic, Nick. Is there any real truth in it? And his lawyer, Andrew Jessup, recently came across something that convinced him the story's true. So he rounded up the heirs of the four original Tories and arranged for them to meet on the island this afternoon. If I can decipher the code, they'll dig up the treasure and divide it. It's a some night to dig up anything, I'd say. Oh, gosh, Nick, I wish you hadn't let that boat leave us here like this. This is the loneliest looking island I ever saw. Especially on a nasty night like this. It's all right, Betsy. We'll go back with Jessup when he goes. Okay, you're the boss. Ah, that must be the house up there. Uh-huh. Oh, my God. Nick, listen. Yes, I hear it. Wait here, Patsy, in the dock. I want to see what's wrong. Hey, you! Stay where you are! Get your hands up! Stop, I said! Oh, got away. Well, here, let me help you out. My dead. Murdered. Nick! Nick, what is it? How I'm you okay, Patsy. This man isn't. He stopped a bullet with his head. Who is it, Nick? I don't know. Let's see if he's any identification on him. Ah, here we are. Cyrus J. File. Why, that's one of the heirs, Patsy. I remember the name. One of the heirs? Yes. Nick, what's that shining in the mud at your feet? Where? Right there. Oh, yes. Why, it's a napkin ring. A napkin ring? Out here? What in the world? I don't know, Patsy. But let's get this man's body up to the house. They may know what it's all about. In heaven's name. Are you Jessup? Yes. Who are you? Nick Carter. Oh, come in, come in. Well, you know this man? Great heavens, that file. Put him down here. Uh, what happened? Well, I heard him call out. And then I heard a shot. I found him dead. Are all your people here with you? Why, yes. File was here a few minutes ago, but discovered he'd left his glasses on my boat and went down to get them. Anyone else on the island? Only Matt O'Dell, the caretaker for the fishing company that owns the island. 
We're expecting Peter Brady, the personal representative of the owners, to arrive shortly, but he hasn't come yet. Well, where are the others? In the living room. You're sure Fyle was murdered? You don't get a shot through the head the way he was, accidentally. You ever see this ring before? That's Fyle's ring. It's his part of the clue to the treasure. How could a napkin ring be a clue to a treasure? I can't tell you that. I simply know that each of the four heirs has a napkin ring like this. And that the four rings together give the key to the hiding place of the treasure. Ah. And it's possible that whoever killed this man wanted to get hold of the ring for himself. Oh, who'd want to do that? Where did this Matt Odell stay? He has a shack just below here where he lives. Why? I think I'll have a talk with him. I'll be right back. <laughs> Must be Ordell's shack. The only one around here. Oh, not here. I think it'd stay home on a night like this. Well, no one's. It. Who's there? That. Deuce would want to... Carter! Carter! Over here! What's up? Hey, what happened to you? I don't quite know. Except that somebody knocked me cold when I was looking for Odell. Did you see anybody? No. Did you? No. I came down here to tell you that Odell's at the house. Came in just after you left. I thought you might be searching for him. How so long I... after I left did Odell show up? Why, about five minutes, I should say. I want to talk to that man. I think... Hey, wait a minute. The ring. Files napkin ring. What about it? It's gone. I had it in my pocket when I came down here, but it's gone now. So that's what your assailant was after. Uh, it looks that way. Well, let's be getting back. Fine business. One other ring is missing before we can... Now, hold on. There's a hole in my coat pocket. Maybe I... There, there, there it is. I just caught the glitter of it in the flashlight. Oh, you're right. That's it. And the murderer has missed again. Hello there. Is that you, Jefferson? Yes. Who is it? Peter Brady. Oh, hello, Brady. This is Nick Carter. Uh, going to do? solve the cipher for us. You hope. Well, the way things are going now, there may be no cipher left to solve. Well, let's get back to the house. I want to talk to Odell. Well, Carter, did you learn anything from Odell? No. But I'm pretty sure now he had nothing to do with what's been going on here. You mean he wasn't the one who hit you? No. I'm quite sure he knows nothing about that or about Files' death. Oh, by the way, Carter, I want you to meet the other three heirs. This is Cecil Whittemore. How do you do, Mr. Carter? This is George Oldman. How are you, Mr. Carter? And that's Kurt Sturdivant by the fireplace. How, How do you do, do gentlemen? Carter? I understand that no one of you men said anything to anybody about the search for the treasure you expected to make here tonight. Oh, I didn't for one. Did Brady know what this is all about, Jessup? Oh, yes. We had to tell the owners of the island what we intended to do here. Did you mention it to anyone, Brady? No, certainly not. That is, except for a chap who used to work here on the island as Odell's assistant. You mean Charlie Bainbridge? Yes, I thought he might be interested having worked here. Ah, there's the man, Carter. He worked here on the island up until about six months ago. He was a fanatic on the subject of the Corey treasure. Hunted for it every spare moment he had. He got so he felt the treasure was his because he spent so much time looking for it. You think he'd be crazy enough to come out here and start a private war to get hold of it? He might. He's practically cracked on the subject. All right, we'll see. But first, where are the other napkin rings? Each man has his own ring, Carter. Right, right. I have mine. And there's no doubt at all, but the treasure is still here on the island? This island hasn't been tenanted for nearly a hundred years, except for the caretakers. It's used as a tie-up and stopover for the boats working for the fishing company who owns it. Brady can tell you that. Well, that's right, Mr. Carter. There's every reason to believe the stuff is right where the original owners there is. How much is it worth? Any idea? Oh, something over two millions, as far as I can gather. Gosh, if it's worth all that, how come the whole island hasn't been dug up before this? That's a lot of money. The whole island's practically one big rock, and without some idea of where to look, it would be an impossible job. I see. Well, whether the killer is Charlie Vane or someone else, he's probably on this island right now. First thing to do is to see that he doesn't get off the island. Now we can catch him. Sounds logical. How can we do it? Odell. Yes, sir. Will you come in here, please? Yes. What do you want? I want you to go down to the dock and take the spark plugs out of each of the company boats. Then no one can use them. Yes, sir. Jessup, you and Brady do the same with the boats you came in. All right. Come on, Brady. Right. I'm going to make a tour of the island to be sure there are no other boats here. And we can sit tight until morning. 
catch whoever's behind us. I'll go with you, Nick. It's a nasty night outside, Betsy. It's very dangerous. I don't care. I'll feel safer where you are than I would anywhere else. So let's go. Yes. And no argument. <laughs> Well, there's the house, Patsy, right up there. Uh-huh. We've been almost around the island, and we haven't found a trace of another boat. Maybe... Wait. Hmm? Aha! Look here, Patsy. On this rock. So there's been a boat drawn up here recently. Right. That's the only possible explanation of those scrape marks in the barnacles there. But since there's no boat here now, the killer may have left the island already. I certainly hope so. I've had enough for one night. If he got drowned in the... No! No! What's happened now? A killer loose on the island on a black stormy night promised more trouble. And that scream sounded as if the promise has been fulfilled. How is Nick going to find the murderer of one and possibly two men before he does any more killings? And what's the riddle of the old Tory treasure? We'll see in just a moment. Whatever your family's preference may be in home decoration, your home is bound to be more beautiful when its floors are well kept and shining. And with Linux self-polishing wax, Floors always look their very best without tiresome rubbing or polishing. Yes, with Linex self-polishing wax, which is simply wiped on, your floors are handsome for a long time because Linex self-polishing wax dries to a rich, satiny, long-lasting finish that really wears thanks to its high content of genuine Carnaval wax. And the finish may be renewed wherever you like without re-waxing the whole floor. What's more, Linex self-polishing wax is easy to keep lovely for you whisk surface dirt away in a twinkling with a damp cloth. And Linex self-polishing wax is the anti-skid floor finish, for the underwriter's laboratories have proved by test that wood, linoleum, and rubber tile floors are actually less slippery after Linex self-polishing wax has been applied. Be sure to ask for Linex, L-I-N-X, Linex self-polishing wax. You'll find all three great Linex home brighteners and Chemtone, the miracle wall finish, at hardware, paint, and department stores everywhere. And now, back to our story. We left Nick and Patsy on the beach near the house hunting for the mysterious killer. Suddenly... No! No! Nick, come on, come on. That came from the house. That you, Carter? Yes. You hear that scream, Joseph? Yes, I was just leaving my bowl tonight. Here, help. He fell off the roof. Come in, Grady. He's dead. He landed on his head. Yes, he's dead, all right. By Sturtevant. Sturtevant dead, too. What's going on here? Quiet, quiet, everybody. How can we find out what happened when you all try to talk at once? Quiet, please. Now, Brady, what do you know about this? I was just coming back from my boat when I heard a scream. I looked up and silhouetted against the sky were two men on the roof. One of them pushed the other over the edge and screamed again as he fell. It was awful. Did you see anything else? I was looking at the body when I heard the back door slam. Then it sounded as if somebody ran off through the brush. Well, why didn't you go after him? I chased him after a murderer in the dark, unarmed. You think I'm crazy? I don't know. Wait a moment. What do you know about Servant and Death? Why, we, uh, Servant and Ullman and I, were waiting in the living room for you and Jessup and Brady to come back. Servant got the bright idea that he'd go up to the roof and see if he could see anything. A little later, we heard him yell, and we started up the stairs to see what was wrong. Did you hear anything after he was killed? Why, we, we think we heard someone dash down, down the back stairs and out the back door. Well, you better get Sturban's body inside. I'm going to have a look at the roof, see what I can find there. Come on, Patsy. Right with you, Nick. Find anything useful, Carter? No tracks in the ground outside that mean anything. The ground's too cut up. There's a sort of stone platform though up there on the roof that the Tories must have used as a lookout platform. The faint marks of two men up there. But still not good enough to help us any. There's no question, though, that Sturgeon was thrown from there. Well, what do we do now? If we had more guns, I'd suggest we all get out and try to find whoever's doing this killing. If there's only one gun, mine is hopeless. Nick, are you going to try to solve the cipher? I'm afraid we can't, Patsy. Because the killer got away with Sturgeon's ring. No, no, he didn't. Sturgeon gave it to me to keep for him. Oh, well, 
We still have all four rings. Our murdering friend is having all this trouble for nothing. Then let's get started. All right, let me have the rings. Here are, Carter. All four of them. Good. Now, let's see. Mm hmm. Each of these rings has a different inscription. Excuse me, dear. Mind if I go back and eat my supper? I ain't had time to eat yet, and I'm getting a mite hungry. No, no, Adele. Go right ahead. We'll let you know if we need you. Thank you. The only answer to this is that the inscriptions on the rings constitute the cipher itself. The only question is how to arrange the rings to get the correct interpretation. Nick, did you notice that there are little notches filed in the edges of the rings? Mm Mm-hmm. Two of the rings have the notches on both the top and bottom, and these other two have them only on one edge. Yes, Patrick. I believe that if the rings are put together with the notches matching up, we'll be heading in the right direction. You mean stack them one on top of the other? Exactly. Uh-huh. With the notches matching up in each case, the rings with the single notches will go on the top and the bottom, respectively. I see. Like this. That's it. Well, now what? You notice, Patsy? There are two lines of inscription on each ring. That's right. And from the uneven way the letters on the inscriptions are engraved, I feel sure it was done so that with the rings stacked on top of each other the way you have them, certain of the letters in the inscriptions will come directly under each other. There are only three or four places where they do that, Nick. As a matter of fact, Patsy, there's only one place, if you look closely, where the letters are really directly under each other. Yes, you're right. Write these letters down as I read them. Okay, go ahead. H A E T M L I 3. Did you say 3? Yes, one of the rings has the date 1730 in the second line. Oh, yes, of course. Hey, wait a minute. Right under the 3 on the bottom ring is another number. Looks like, yes, there's 251. Write that down, too. You think that's part of it? I believe it is. Now, what have you got there? Nothing that makes sense. H A E T M L I 3 251. Hmm. Maybe that's in cipher 2, Betsy. Maybe. No. We've got the right ring on the top and the right ring on the bottom, and not to prove that. Well, we've got the two rings in the center in the wrong order. We just transpose them, we... Why, of course. You're way ahead of me. It refers to a book. A book just as well known to those old Tories as it is to us. Now, where can I find a copy of it here? Ah, Matt O'Dell. He has quite a collection of books in his shack. He must have a copy there. Oh, but Nick, do you think... I'll be back in a minute, Patsy. Just long enough to get the book. far gone. I, I... Yes, Odell, what is it? Who poisoned you? Did you see him, Odell? I, I, no, it's going too fast. Odell, can you tell me who did it? He killed Charlie. Saw him. He, he did it. Spade. House. Down. In the... What happened? The killer. Oh, no, no, no. I surprised him. He came up here. We followed him. Must have waited for us. In here. Shot Altman. As I'll say, he did. Must have killed him instantly. Go on. Go on. Then he shot me through the arm. Went out the window. Climbed down that big tree outside and ran off into the woods. Carter! Come here! Hurry! More trouble? I just found it. I... In the room where the rings were. The rings were? Uh, oh, Patsy. Patsy. Uh, Patsy, are you hurt? Oh, Patsy. my head. Oh. What happened, Patsy? Well, I was sitting here waiting for you, and suddenly the ceiling fell in on me. Somebody hit you? I guess so. I didn't see anybody or hear them. 
Oh, Nick, the ring. They're gone. But oh. it makes no difference. I have the notes we made. I took them with me to be sure. I guess whoever hit me wanted the ring for himself. Did I hear some shooting? Yes, you did. Baldwin is dead. And Brady shot through the arm. Oh, did you get back in time to catch the murderer? No. Brady says he went out the window and down the tree. I'm going outside to see if I can find anything that might be a clue. <laughs> I think so. Now, tell me what happened here. Well, we were all sitting in the living room when Brady heard something outside in the hall. He went out to look, and a moment later, we heard him call out to someone to stop. Oldman ran out, and they both dashed up the stairs. There were several shots, and I called to you. You know the rest. I see. Brady, did you get a look at his face? Why, no. No, I didn't. It was dark in the hall, and I couldn't All right, see. all right. Never mind, never mind. Let's get finished with this cipher. But, Carter, shouldn't we do something about this? Plenty of time for that. Plenty of time. Cipher comes first. Oh, by the way, I found Matt Hodell dead in his shack. Poisoned. What? Somebody put strychnine in his food. Odell's dead? But why would anyone want to kill him? Matt didn't have any of the rings. Right. Odell was killed for an entirely different reason. Well, now let's get this cipher finished. I found this book in Odell's shack, and it gave me the answer. That copy of Hamlet told you where the treasure was buried? It did. You remember, Patsy, we had the letters H-A-E-T-M-L-I-3-2-5-1? That's right. Well, if you transpose the two rings in the middle of the stack we made, you get these letters. H-A-M-L-E-T. One. Three. Two, five, one. That's wonderful, Nick. Hamlet, Act One, Scene Three, Line 251. Is that it? Exactly, Patsy. I looked it up, and the clue gives us this line. Deep in the cellar, seek for our remains. And the treasure's buried in the cellar of this house. Apparently. So let's see what we can find down there. We'll probably have some hunting to do around here. And it shouldn't take too long. To... Uh, hey, hey, don't shine that light in my eyes. I can't see. Oh, sorry, Brady. Now we'll see. Look out, Nick! No, you don't, Brady. Oh, Carter! Why did you knock Brady out? He was trying to kill Nick. He was afraid I was getting too close to his secret. His secret? Brady is the murderer we've been looking for. Brady? But what about Charlie Vane? Vane existed only in Brady's imagination. He's been dead six months. Vane dead? Yes. And you'll find him buried in that corner over there, where Brady buried him after he killed him. How do you know where he's buried, Nick? When I flashed the light in your faces a moment ago, I saw where Brady was looking. Naturally, he'd looked toward the spot which held his secret. He was afraid I might accidentally stumble on the body if we started digging down here. But how in the world did you know that Vane was dead and buried there? Odell lived long enough to give me a clue to that. And with what I already had figured out, it all made sense. That's why Brady killed Odell, to keep him from talking. Absolutely incredible, Carter. It's like a nightmare. Except that it makes sense. Vane and Brady together found the treasure when they were working here six months ago. Brady killed Vane so he could have the treasure for himself. Then when you, Jessup, organized this trip to solve the napkin ring cipher code, he determined to kill you all off so as to prevent you discovering it. Before you knew he was here on the island, he killed File, then went out again and came into dock. It was Brady who threw Stubbinett off the roof and later knocked Patsy out and killed Ullman. He also shot himself. The powder marks on his sleeve prove that. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. Well, now let's find the treasure. <laughs> But if the treasure's buried in the cellar, Nick, what are we looking up here on the roof for? Oh, didn't I tell you, Patsy? The treasure isn't buried down there. It's up here. What? Up here. But the quotation from Hamlet Carter that said... The quotation I read you was not the right one, Jessup. Now, let's see. You see those large flat stones forming the platform on that side? Yes, what about them? Count off the first 11 and lift the next one up. Lift it up? It's cemented down there. I doubt that. Go ahead, Jessup, try it. Give him a hand with him, more. All right, if you say so. You seem to be right about everything so far. Even defining Dane's body where you said it was. Now, with him, more. Lift. Oh, Nick, you're right. The stone is coming up. Oh. Well, will you look at that? The old Tory's treasure. Nick, look at those gorgeous rings and necklaces. And gold coins. Yes, Patsy. If Jessup is right, you're looking at about two million dollars worth of gold and jewels. But how did you know it was here under this particular stone carter? Because the quotation from Hamlet, the correct quotation, not the one I made up to fool Brady, 
reads like this. Upon the platform, fixed 11 and 12. And there was no other solution possible. In just a moment, Nick and Patsy will bring you a preview of next week's exciting case. But first, let's face the fact. Everybody's days are busy. We've all filled our daily schedule full to overflowing, doing our home front jobs and helping with the all-out effort toward victory in every way we know how. So we appreciate more than ever before what it means to relax and how much easier it is to relax when a home is pleasant and inviting. American homemakers are learning how much easier it is to keep a home that way with the three great Linux home brighteners. For example, they're learning that Linux cream polish restores the original handsomeness of fine furniture in one quick, easy application. Banishes messy fingerprints, helps conceal ugly scratches, does away with cloudy old polish and dust. You see, Linux cream polish for fine furniture actually cleans as it polishes, saving one whole step in the cleaning day routine of busy homemakers, cutting their work in half. Let your fine furniture regain its loveliness with Linux cream polish. Remember always to ask your dealer for Linux cream polish, which cleans as it polishes. It's the streamlined way to furniture care. You'll find all three great Linux home brighteners at your nearest hardware, paint, or department store. And now let's hear from Nick Carter himself. Well, Nick, what's on the program for next week? Now, next week, Ken, I want to tell you about a man who was killed by an unknown poison, and apparently without opportunity or motive. Four people were gathered for a discussion on Hindu philosophy, and suddenly one of them fell over dead. None of the others had any idea what had happened. Sounds pretty blind to me. How did it work out? Well, what clues there were were uncovered accidentally and unexpectedly. And it wasn't until the second murder that things became clear. <laughs> and even then, nobody but Nick could figure out what anything meant. But he got the right answer. And the murderer. Uh, well, what's the name of the story, Nick? I call it Poison with a Past. Or the Mystery of the Vedanta Killing. And that's all about that for now. So long. So long, everybody. And so long to you both, Nick and Patsy. We'll be looking forward to seeing you again next week. <laughs> Next week at this same time, listen to another curious experience of Nick Carter, Master Detective, entitled Poison with a Past. Or Nick Carter, The Mystery of the Vedanta Killing. Nick Carter, Master Detective, is featured in Street and Smith magazine. Lon Clark is starred as Nick with Helen Schultz as Patsy. Original music is played by Lou White. And the programs are written and directed by Jock McGregor. Nick Carter, Master Detective, is presented at this time and over these same stations each week by the three great Linux home brighteners. Linux clear gloss varnish, Linux cream polish, and Linux self-polishing wax. Created by Acme, America's great producer of Acme fine quality paint. This is Ken Powell speaking for the thousands of Linux dealers all over America and saying... So long until next week. This is Mutual. <laughs> <laughs>